the wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation that are, are absorbed in air, strongly in air, are either the ultraviolet or the soft X-ray regions. Every other electromagnetic radiation, radiation visible, microwave, infrared, are, are uh, gamma essentially, uh, are very transmitted, very uh, highly transmissive in air. But it's the, ultra, it's the vacuum ultraviolet and the soft X-ray regions of the electromagnetic spectrum are what have, are what have absorbed strongly in air. The interesting fact is, it just happens to be that those wavelengths have photon energies that are energetic enough to cause photochemistry to occur in cellulose, which is exactly what you need in order to cause a discoloration in the, in the cloth. And so uh, I think that would be the general thinking that I have at this time. Uh, I also would say that I reserve the right to change any of the parameters of this theory uh, as I, or, or even the concept a little bit to, uh, to, to get this thing to work. And I also might point out one other thing in logic. I'm not interested in just a phenomenological, you know, just a parameter characterization. I want to take the minimum number of assumptions using the minimum number of characteristics of the shroud to create the theory. And then once you have the theory, to predict or explain the rest of the characteristics of the image. Because you want, science wants a theory that not only models, but you also want it to be able to predict. I with Michael Tite earlier today. Uh, he's on record uh, as saying that he doesn't believe that the shroud is the work of an artist, and yet he obviously believes in the C14 date of the Middle Ages. And so which, which leads one to conclude that if this is the body of a real human being, then if it is medieval, then we're talking about what, have, what some have called a custom crucifixion, perhaps. And I ask you to just comment on what do you think the probability of this event which you describe occurring to an individual who may have uh, been a victim of a medieval custom crucifixion? What is the probability of a this kind of a thing that I've described being the result of a custom crucifixion? Well, I guess, uh, how many people are in the world? Uh, four billion, is that, is that the number? Well, I would say that the number is, since, since I, I know, I don't know of this happening to, or never have observed, observed this, or, and I don't believe science has ob observed this directly on any individual, probably the probability would be less than one over four, four billion. I don't know. That, that's being a little bit uh, smug here. I, uh, I guess what I'm saying is I've got I've got a theory that it, that, that it, uh, a hypothesis that explains the image on the shroud. Clearly, if this if the carbon 14 date turns out to stand, then I would have to say that this mechanism then operated in the Middle Ages. Uh, but I think there are some things that we have to be concerned about with with the carbon 14 before we're ready to accept it and. Uh, I, one thing I don't believe is that you can just take a cloth, put it over a body, uh, a, real, a real body, and suddenly you're going to get an image like you see on the shroud uh, through a conventional natural mechanism. At least I haven't been able to, uh, and no one's been able to show that, that such a thing can occur. If, if, if someone could do that, then of course I will recognize the logical priority of a conventional mechanism over the one that I'm proposing here. And, uh, and we'll go with that one. But until that, until and, and unless that happens, uh, I'd like to suggest this theory as one to explain the image. Papers delivered today uh, discuss the concept of a neutron flux uh, as as possibly a reason for the um, aberrant conclusions of C14. Um, or aberrant in that they differ from the rest of the body of data which we seem to have. So I'd like for you to comment on that, if you will. Well, I guess my response would be from the standpoint of my theory, I don't have any need to hypothesize a neutron flux to explain what I'm trying to explain, and that is the image on the shroud. I am, I do have to admit that I'm postulating a radiation that is involved to create the image, uh, if I'm willing to do that, then I certainly ought to be willing, at least open to the possibility of 
something else being involved there too. But I, I guess I'm unwilling to go any further than what I have to uh, postulate in order to explain what I want to explain. I guess um, some of the comments that were made today regarding that neutron flux, uh, uh, Dr. Tight, I believe, made this, was that it, I kind of agree. It would be kind of a fortuitous uh, thing if the neutron flux happened to be of just the, the magnitude to bring you into the Middle Ages. Uh, I, I guess I, I have to agree with that. But on the other hand, it may not be that fortuitous uh, if one were to take the range of time from that the shrubs could logically occur from 2,000 years, I don't think anybody would argue that it's any older than that, and certainly no one would argue that it's any younger than the Middle Ages, which is where the carbon-14 puts you. But I think what you really have to do is to divide that 1,300-year that window into the error bars, uh, uh, error windows of carbon-14, which is roughly plus or minus 100 years, maybe 200 years, depending upon what statistics you use. If you do that, divide it up into, say, one, let's say, uh, uh, every 200 years, 200-year windows, then you're talking about uh, uh, time bins of six, roughly six time bins, six or seven time bins between 2000 to, to the Middle Ages. And if you have a perturbation in carbon-14 due to some mechanism like this or anything else, uh, then maybe the chances are like one in six, like uh, rolling a dice to put you in that window. So uh, I don't think that's necessarily a, a, a real convincing statement, but uh, uh, I think basically I do agree with that. It, it, it would be fortuitous to just simply have a, 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 a date that by that mechanism that will take you to uh, the Middle Ages, which is exactly the furthest that we can uh, historically take it back with absolute certainty. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. your comments.